for this wonderful series. Um, we just wanted to thank you all for you know, participating, traveling with us on this journey. Um, what a beautiful uh, journey it's been in encountering so many wonderful artists and their stories and the way the Lord is speaking through them. So we've saved the best for last. It's our own um, Jinja Jetten. We'll kind of get into a little bit more, but as a reminder, if everyone could, with your screen name, please make sure that it does have your name, um, just so that we can interact with each other and in different points during today's talk. And um, additionally, if you would like to, we invite you all to consider um, leaving your videos on. Of course, feel free to turn them off if it's a distraction. Um, and then finally, we will ask that everyone remain muted during the talk, um, just to, uh, so that we can hear our speaker a little bit better today. And there will be time for questions and answers towards the end that um, we can help facilitate that conversation. Um, if you have any questions or if things come up during the talk that you'd like to ask later, um, feel free to chat uh, that question directly to myself or to Malana. Um, and we will help uh, ask those questions at the end of today's session as well. Um, anything else? I think we're okay. Moana, you want to take it away? Sure. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Milana, and um, I have the honor of introducing our very own uh, Jito Portugal, or Jito Jeta, as many of us call him. Uh, this is someone that I've had the pleasure of learning from and watching um, as a very young age, at a very young age in Baltimore uh, Jesus Youth Community, as well as the St. Alphonse Sierra Malabar Church um, in Baltimore, where he is still a very active member and leader in both uh, communities through various ministries and even being the director of rel religious education there. Uh, by trade, he is a statistician for the Food and Drug Administration with a PhD in biostatistics. Uh, by vocation, he is a very devoted father and husband uh, with their newest edition added just this past month. And uh, of course, by calling and the reason we're here today, he is an amaz amazing artist. Uh, his talents range from oil to acrylic paintings, uh, stained glass, digital media, altar designs, writing lyrics, writing plays and directing, as well as watercolor and much, much more that he'll probably go into as we talk today. And you can check out all of his art and various modes of um, digital art um, in his digital portfolio, portfolio uh, visiodivina.art. I'm sure he'll share a little bit more about that as well. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I want to welcome uh, Tinto Portugal. Oh, thank you, Milana. So can you see my screen? Yes. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Milana, for your uh, nice introduction. So welcome, everyone. So this is uh, a brief presentation on artist vocation. Um, so in this presentation, I am trying to provide uh, you know, a view um, on the role of art in the church and evangelization. Um, also share some insights from my journey as an artist. Uh, and also some thoughts on um, using beauty as a means of evangelization. And uh, finally, kind of an invitation those who are interested to join or this journey um, as of artist vocation in the movement. So uh, maybe we can start with a, a brief prayer. So this prayer, um, uh, so I think we all can pray together. Um, our creator God, you have filled the world with beauty. Your divine presence can be seen in all your works. 
open our eyes to behold and experience life with richness and fullness intended for each one of us by you that by rejoicing in your whole creation we may learn to serve you with thanksgiving and gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made remember o lord those artists among us who suffer in the midst of distressing circumstances comfort defend and surround them with your praise guide them through these present uncertainties with a confidence that you will never fail or forsake them o eternal god grant us to be faithful unto death with the talents and gifts you have entrusted to us may we live our lives in fervent service to you amen then luke pray for us then catherine of bologna pray for us then michael archangel pray for us plus fra angelico pray for us um the saints and plus fra angelico they are the patron saints of artists okay um so uh, let me begin this presentation with uh, some uh, some news about the modern art so the first uh, piece uh, art uh, or the news about the modern art is about an art installation in italy uh, which reopens after three years mistake it to for a trash so what happened was like uh, this artist actually tried to make an installation on um, Uh, on a party evening after a party evening uh, during 1980s uh, at that time italy was very flourished and well um, uh, that party time in italy so after that a particular a day of party so the artist tried to display all the like empty bottles and all but unfortunately the next day morning when the cleaners came they thought that this is a trash so someone forgot to clean up after a party so what they did was they put all these empty bottles into trash can um another thing happened like uh, it is in a <clears throat> um san francisco museum uh, of modern art so what uh, two youngsters what they did was they put a, a glass on the floor of a modern art what happened was uh, then uh, people came and they thought that that an art that is an art installation and people started to wait and take a look at uh, this glass and um, making interpretation about it so um, so this was kind of a prank but people thought this is an art piece um so there is a cleaning lady in name badi she was the, she said that after cleaning all this mess that i thought they were gar- garbage so here uh, you can see that uh, we there is a hard time in the present contemporary art world to distinguish whether it is a good piece of art um, or how to how to call uh, uh, how to call whether it is a good piece of art so that is a challenge uh, right now but i am not judging whether this is a good art or bad this is so this is kind of artistic uh, expressions in the contemporary world art world So this is another uh, set of paintings. The well, first one is white paintings by Robert Raymond. Um, this is kind of a white panels displayed in Museum of Modern Art in Paris. So what he tried to do is to display three panels, and he has many other white paintings. And this will give you more kind of if anyone is skeptical about your artistic talent, you know, this may give you an affirmation that anyone can be an artist. You know, you can just paint white only white or any any. particular single color and you can display even in leading art museums and second painting uh, was a black uh, is is called a black paintings by Ma- mark rothko Ro- mark rothko is very popular uh, artist so he displayed this black panels so uh, this is the this is another form of contemporary uh, art and uh, uh, exhibitions So let me introduce another installation. It is called "My Bed" by Tracy Emin. Uh, so what happened was that it is inspired by a, a depressive phase of artist life when this artist uh, remained in bed for several days without eating or drinking, but only alcohol. So she only consumed alcohol during that time. And when he, uh, when she looked at the wild, uh, this mess or this bed, 
she thought that this could be an art piece and she tried to exhibit it. Uh, and um, interestingly, this sold for $3 million, uh, this particular bed. And this is another art installation in uh, LA County Museum of Art. This is a huge stone just uh, putting uh, on the wall. It's about 340 ton uh, stone. Put, and this is called a, a art installation I like representing the contemporary art. And this is another uh, leading our most influential artwork of 20th century. So this is a fountain. Um, this is uh, by Marcel Duchamp in 1970. And um, she, uh, he actually took this porcelain um, fountain or like you um, to display. Uh, and uh, the art critics say that this is the most influential artwork uh, of the 20th century. So you can see that all these contemporary art, there is a clear separation of world of art for a world of beauty to the world of faith. So there is a distinction and these artists try to portray their brokenness or their present state of mind. So, uh, so letter to artists, John Paul II, uh, St. John Paul II said that, um, even when they explore the darkest depths of the soul or the most unsettling aspects of evil, artists give a voice in a way to the universal desire for redemption. So these all actually expression of a, a kind of a, a cry for redemption of the people. So uh, these artists in the contemporary world is actually having that, uh, that uh, longingness or a desire for redemption, but they don't know where, from where they can find um, the ultimate redemption, which is Jesus Christ. So this is the, the setting, the, the, the contemporary art world where uh, all these brokenness are exposed, but they don't know uh, where to go for a solution. So with this, like, uh, let, let us see how the Christianity and art evolved, like uh, both hand in hand, like uh, together, and how, how the beauty um, played the importance of beauty in the, in the church. Jesus Christ, we know Jesus Christ himself is the image of God or icon of God. And Holy Spirit is a mysterious artist who created the entire universe. So from the very beginning of Christianity, art and imagery is, uh, have a very distinct, significant role. So these are some of the early representations or artistic representation uh, from our early Christian uh, communities. So you can see the first one, it, it, it tus, that is uh, representing fish symbol. So uh, because at that time, early centuries, there was religious uh, persecution. So the Christians hide uh, themselves or they prevent, uh, or um, when they meet, they needed some kind of um, symbols to represent, the, you know, to inform others. So they use this fish symbol and it means Jesus Christ, God, Son, Savior, the symbol called Ictus. And the next is like uh, in catacombs, the early Christians, they uh, imitated the practice of Roman people, they, which uh, Roman people, they portrayed uh, images in their catacombs. When the Christians uh, used uh, or built their own catacombs, they also portrayed uh, images from Jesus' uh, life, uh, the good shop bed or like uh, bread and uh, fish. All these were like the early forms of Christian art or like representations. So the fish laws or shepherd, uh, all these actually represented. And if you go to the catacombs, you can still see some of the early uh, frescoes and these kind of art pieces. So when the Christianity got uh, up, accepted, like uh, with the edict of Milan, when Constantine gave uh, approval for the Christianity, then a new phase of Christian art began and uh, uh, Constantine himself constructed many beautiful basilica. Uh, uh, that is the first one is uh, uh, Palace Basilica that is construct that was constructed in 305 to 310 at that time. And you can see the Christ and Apostles, some art forms. So the state actually, uh, Constantine actually promoted all these beautiful um, artwork and uh, uh, in, within the church. So uh, Hagia Sophia, this has a very prominence in Catholic or Christian um, 
beauty or like an art world because uh, this was the biggest church at that time. So uh, in <clears throat> Istanbul uh, or um, uh, the Constantine actually uh, moved that when the, the Eastern and East and West uh, Roman Empire was created and the Hagia Sophia, uh, it was Justinian first constructed uh, this Hagia Sophia in 3, uh, 532. Uh, started that building and we know all these stories right now then uh, the Turks conquered it by I think 15th century then make it to mosque then move back to uh, museum then again now it's uh, made, it, made it into a mosque again but this uh, Hagia Sophia played a pivotal role uh, attracting even the Russians they came and visit this Hagia Sophia and that's how it said that the Russia and the Russia got and the Christian faith accept, decided to accept the Christian faith. So Hagia Sophia uh, has a very prominent place in Christian art. And during the medieval time, uh, another expression in the East, the iconography got flourished. And in the West, uh, more like uh, the Gothic architecture or Romansk kind of uh, representations uh, got prominence. And illuminated manuscript was one of the characteristics at that time where the Bible and other books got in, um, the artists try to illuminate. So all this, you can see that how the art actually uh, um, <coughs> flourished uh, during that time and uh, how art helped uh, to uh, preach gospel because the illiterates and all people who didn't um, uh, know how to read. So art is the best tool, especially for the iconography. It is considered as very theologically accurate and the iconography are used as a medium to teach these people uh, theologically accurate um, uh, concepts of uh, Christianity. So this is how the art evolved during the medieval time. Then by the Renaissance period, um, uh, more prominence, uh, the, the art got more prominence. The Renaissance period, we have Da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo, Raphael, and not only in the art, it also Renaissance actually gave a more enthusiasm among the scientists, writers. So Renaissance was, the, and they, all these developed in the context of church. So the main distinguishing, if you consider the art, the, the Renaissance gave a new, introduced a linear perspective. You can see the, this is before uh, coronation of origin, before uh, painted before Renaissance, it's very plain. This is, there is no three dimensional or perspective element on it. But uh, this is the first um, uh, painting after Renaissance, like using a uh, linear perspective, you can see that the 3D, um, uh, 3D uh, perspective, or like uh, you can see, uh, this is the first painting. This was the first painting uh, by Masaccio um, after Renaissance. But uh, the art help in the ch uh, help in uh, to the church uh, during uh, the after the Protestant Reformation, because the Protestant Reformation questioned the basic foundations of Catholic faith, even sacraments and all these things. But the Council trend uh, actually set all this theologically uh, uh, provide all the theological interpretations and response to uh, Protestant Reformation, but. Uh, uh, but in order to communicate to the common public, uh, popes and all the priests at that time uh, invited artists to uh, use their artistic talent uh, to, uh, to counter these Protestant um, uh, like challenges. So uh, there was a deep collaboration between the theologians and artists. The theologians said, the theologically correct, correct uh, interpretations and artists try to portray those, uh, <clears throat> those ideas. So art was useful because uh, it was effective tool in evangelization and bringing real clarity, no need to read multiple documents, but just to see a picture, it is very clear and it is uh, uplifting, art is uplifting. So uh, um, the post-reformation, uh, uh, so a, huge kind of uh, creation of artistic, even in um, architecture or like paintings and music, uh, we see all these developments. So this is the 
this was the this is the first church after reformation church of jesu um, this uh, you can see that um, this is uh, gives importance to holy eucharist you can see uh, the holy eucharist has the prominent uh, place and also in the altar uh, uh, holy eucharist placed with a very prominence so this is actually a response to uh, the protestant challenges against the holy eucharist so this inspired many artists and this was uh, a painting institution of eucharist by federico barocci and he painted uh, this uh, this beautiful painting and you can see that in, the, in the, during this renaissance period uh, they used uh, geometrical proportions you can see that the trinity here or the triangle here one triangle two here and there is another triangle with the hand and the head of jesus and in the middle places uh, the artist place uh, the blessed sacrament so this gives more importance to this is a response to the challenges of christians about the uh, uh, blessed um, or you holy eucharist and uh, next painting next to us uh, about the challenges or christians about <clears throat> sacrament of reconciliation so guido reni this painting is very popular uh, the dependent saint peter so you can see that how he placed his hands on the chest and saying mia culpa um, and looking at to um, to uh, to heaven and you can see the light is hitting here that means he is speaking to uh, god or jesus about his frailty his brokenness and this gives a kind of a response to christians on um, repenting or like a pro, uh, saying our sins to priest and the confession and all so another painting was christ and good thief by titian you can see that you can see only one uh, thief here um, uh, so this is kind of a sacrament of penance uh, the thief is confessing his uh, sins to jesus and giving uh, absolution here so this all this art actually emphasized uh, the importance uh, <clears throat> uh, of the christian belief uh, and this is the final statement against the protestant uh, reformation this is the last judgment uh, <clears throat> so this is in sistine chapel if you get a chance to go there you know this is a very magnificent painting and it it covers almost all the christians or challenges uh, of uh, the protestant reformation it emphasizes the, the role of mother mary um, you know the, the intercession of saints and um, the people are like the final judgment jesus coming as a majestic king uh, in the final days so this all like uh, this we can have we can have a separate zooms uh, like webinar on this painting only because it covers a lot of um such uh, things <clears throat> so we can see that this through art the church responded the challenges of that time uh, especially the protestant reformation so right now in this present world we also experience these kind of challenges because we can see uh, the relativism or people um, uh, the gender kind of uh, issues all these things are happening right now this in the sense of indifference or cultural death so what could be a better approach so right now we uh, provide more information and preaching to them and these are the things that right now most of the <clears throat> evangelization strategies we adopt in such strategies but bishop baron is saying that uh, the best approach in this contemporary world is to begin with the beautiful which leads to good which uh, leads you to the truth so instead of begin with uh, the truth or the uh, good which is always kind of debatable people say that my truth is different your truth and truth is very subjective in that context we can invite people to the beautiful uh, where no one could object uh, this is a less threatening approach uh, you can uh, invite people and uh, through a beautiful music or uh, seeing a beautiful sunset or beautiful scenery uh, say seeing a beautiful stained glass all these kind of a less threatening approach and um, aesthetic approach and from there you can invite them uh, the people to the source of that beauty which is god himself 
So this is kind of a very gentle, uh, more appropriate to the present world. That is, um, uh, that is what uh, Bishop Barron is uh, saying about <clears throat> the beauty approach of beauty. So the uh, beauty of uh, modern man, this is by Cardinal Daniels, he's saying that modern man doubts the truth, resists good, but is fascinated by beauty. So modern man always have uh, <clears throat> doubts on truth and resists good, but to, uh, truth uh, for the beauty, he is fascinated by it. Um, so in the contemporary world, there is a refusal of beauty uh, in the contemporary, world, especially for the stakeholders of beauty, not the common people, but the stakeholders of beauty, as we saw in the initial slides, that they uh, intentionally deny uh, <clears throat> the beauty or God in their creation. So uh, Dostoevsky said, beauty will save the world. But he again asked, what kind of beauty will save the world? So not every beauty. Um, uh, there are two kinds of beauty, a beauty that elevates or beauty that, that destroys. Uh, in other words, a spiritual beauty or material beauty. So if if the beauty uh, limiting to a material subjects, uh, things or the worldly things, that is kind of a, uh, like a beauty that it destroys. But some beauty actually draws us more towards God and that is the, that is the beauty that which is saves, that is. <clears throat> so um, as we've seen, um, beauty has been subject to futility and waits for uh, to be set free and we see uh, or we, we saw that initial slides that uh, there is a cry of red for redemption. So to save the world, the beauty itself first needs to be redeemed. Uh, so the, especially in the contemporary world, there is a redemption needed for beauty also. But how? Uh, so the answer is Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus, it is uh, Jesus Christ, uh, his redemption not limited to certain uh, areas, but his redemption extended even to beauty. In the Eastern spirituality, Christ is described as supremely beautiful, possessed of a beauty above all children of earth. So Jesus uh, is the most beautiful uh, uh, being. So that is in the Eastern spirituality. But in cross, we can see that Jesus is uh, <clears throat> not that beautiful. So there is a contradiction. Uh, Jesus redeemed the beauty by depriving himself of it out of love. So uh, Jesus did not like presented himself uh, the, the most beautiful in worldly dimension, but there is a contradiction. Let us see why uh, this contradiction happens and how this redemption is possible. So this is a, there is a beautiful article by Father um, Renio Kandalamasa. I, I invite you to read that. It will give you more in-depth understanding, but I'll try to explain like a, uh, <clears throat> in, uh, in a little, but you can further read. Uh, that uh, that document. Um, for since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. So um, uh, in Corinthians, we read the wisdom of God. God did not challenge us a superior magnificent wisdom, but uh, God actually presented Jesus came and the gospel, the folly of the gospel, through that folly of the gospel, um, God challenged the wisdom of human being. So Father Kandalamasa actually extending this uh, to beauty. Applied to beauty, beauty, this means that since man is not capable of uplifting him, uh, lifting himself up to the beauty of the creator through the beauty of creatures, God changed his method, so to speak, and decided to reveal his beauty through ignominy, ignominy and the deformity of the cross and suffering. So and God responded, um, through uh, the cross and suffering and, and revealing beauty uh, its opposite. So, um, uh, so uh, th this is like a contradiction. You can see a contradiction applied uh, here, like uh, for the, in the case of wisdom. So, uh, so God challenged the beauty uh, through uh, the, the deformity of the cross. So, uh -oh. The attainment of, attainment of beauty now comes, um, comes through the Paschal mystery of death and re resurrection. So,
who comes through the I'm um, sorry. Uh, so uh, comes through uh, the Pascal mystery of death and res resurrection. So our model and source of redeemed beauty is the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Christ. So if we like for if you are planning to have like an artistic vocation, the only thing that we need to do is to contemplate on the face of Christ, which is the most beauty or revelation of beauty. That is what Kandalamasa is saying. So he adds that uh, the redemption of beauty inevitably happens through choice now. Move from category of beauty to the next higher one, from external beauty to internal beauty, and then to the transcendent beauty of grace. Does not occur spontaneous and easy way. So there is a gradual progression of beauty. Uh, from the material beauty, we can uh, go up to uh, <clears throat> Uh, the, the next level of beauty and ultimately reaching to um, God. So that beauty actually uh, kind of a transcendental nature. So there is, it requires an um, discipline uh, with regard to beauty in, per, and in particular uh, asceticism of eyes. So Shurbak actually said that the people are what they eat and Father Kandalamas are actually extending this to people what are uh, what they look at. So if you have like an artistic vocation, it's very important to have uh, to uh, have an aesthetic vision or like discipline of vision. So it doesn't mean that um, we need to cross everything uh, like uh, false beauty and uh, we uh, need to cross the false beauty and open them to true beauty. But it is it means that contemplating the Christ crucified and risen. So it is the way we contemplate more on Jesus Christ that will give that opens our eyes and that will give uh, more understanding about beauty and that will actually open our eye, inner eyes. So he who does Christ's work must stay with Christ always. This is just uh, Angelico said. Uh, uh, he said uh, that. Uh, if you are like a Christ work, especially in vocation of artist, stay with Christ always. So Christ is the source of our, <clears throat> or the beauty. So this is like a kind of a, uh, basic understanding that I, I am I like having uh, about beauty and or I just try to share how important it is to have a like a deeper intimate relationship with Jesus Christ in order to have this kind of uh, uh, this artistic vocation. And that is the most important thing that we can have uh, when we enter into this journey to have a constant deeper communion with Jesus Christ. So let me just show some of my um, artistic, uh, how the journey, how I started this journey. This was my one of my paintings in 1997. It's in a watercolor painting. And after that, I didn't paint much because I came uh, for studies and work. And then I res uh, you know, like tried to re uh, went back to for artistic creation by 2013. There's a big gap. Uh, then this was the first painting I did at that time, 2013. Then by God's grace, I got a chance to paint the altar of our own church um, in 2014. Um, so. I didn't, I, I, that was the first time I did uh, this kind of a big mural kind of painting. Uh, then 2015 also I uh, got a chance to design stained glass windows uh, for some of the churches. And by 2000, and also I designed some altars in uh, some of our Sierra Malabar churches. So this is how uh, after there is a break and God allowed me to go back and visit uh, or like do something on art. So then I, I was really um, heavily involved in Jesus youth at that time. So uh, one side I did all these kind of artworks and other side I was really involved in um, ministry. And it was in 2016, I was like a um, uh, member of national council, then coordinator of this region. Then I was involved in pro-life ministry um, and multiple other things. And it was kind of a very busy time 
but one day uh, during one of our um, regional meetings you know, i experienced kind of a deep emptiness within me because i was busy i was doing a lot of things but i did not uh, i i felt a void a vacuum within me then i thought about it and i tried to pray why this happened because i'm doing god's ministry then why should i experience this kind of a, a deeper kind of a, that that kind of a feeling then i realized i talked to people and then i feel that god is calling me to something else then i try to um, read and discuss with people and i realized that god is calling me to this kind of an artistic vocation a contemplative life then at that time i read this letter to artists and in the letter to artists pop says that this is a noble ministry the art ministry is a noble ministry but i didn't understand how this painting is that much important uh, then i read some books um, the return of prodigal son by henry newman and actually it says that how the rembrandt painting uh, over the years caused many people uh, if, uh, read uh, like experience god's love so one painting over the years actually trying to influence people so i realized that this painting this art has a it is itself a noble ministry but my question was is it possible be in the jesus youth and uh, you know this is kind of a reflective contemplative kind of a secular life uh, not uh, um, like a monastic life but i need to step back from this act as artist uh, this kind of active ministry but my question was whether it is a, is possible in jesus you then two people came to a uh, very played a very pivotal role one was father vinod we know that uh, he is our chaplain uh, of jesus you here so he actually um, supported me okay this is god's call and you have to go with this and another uh, next one was mrs sunil sunjatan and he also uh, kind of affirmed uh, and we prayed together even now we every in a regular basis like we pray together and identify god's call like and this that, that kind of elders in the movement actually helped me to discern for this call so then i realized that you know god then i start realize that god started using me for different like the paintings and like right now writing poems and all uh, like the songs and all so there is something happening um, through this art so this is like god's call and i realize that i need to step back from kind of an active uh, ministry but there is another way and with the praying with the elders and all god showed me that there is another way and that is the way for me that is a way of beauty so that's how i started to uh, focus more on uh, this uh, art and also let me uh, share some, some of the experience when i created some art walls this is a altar piece at st alfonso siro malabar church so when we try, started to paint you know when uh, when i prayed and i got like an inspiration from mar ephraim um, st ephraim he is uh, is the uh, harp of the holy spirit he wrote many beautiful poems and he uh, had many uh, beautiful interpretations about the old and new testaments and like typological um, interpretations and i tried to read and uh, reflect on that and that's how i tried to paint this altar piece so in the top it's uh, the trinitarian kind of uh, uh, the holy spirit is here jesus is here then the i painted the clouds kind of embracing by the god the father that's that's the feeling that i had when i painted it so that trinity and uh saint ephraim says like in you know, the garden you know the garden was surrounded by mountains so i try to paint mountains and mountain i try to bend it towards um jesus so that's kind of a iconographic tradition all the mountains and everything uh, bending towards uh, jesus so i try to paint in that way and there are you can see two uh, tree we can see we know that there are two trees in the garden the tree of life uh, the, the tree of knowledge and tree of life so i painted the tree of knowledge on the side and the tree of life is jesus himself so one tree brought death and the other tree brought um, uh, life so this is all this from the interpretation or like the writings of saint ephraim like he beautifully and in in siro malabar liturgy we also uh, use this um, imageries uh, extensively uh, then i try to uh, paint the rock here representing um, jesus told peter on this rock i will build the church 
So this represents the, the rock and also some other interpretations. And the Ark of the Covenant is placed within the church. So, uh, so that's how I painted. And I painted some kind of this kind of photo. Uh, so this represents the fallen nature of humanity. After death, Jesus went to uh, uh, the people, the dead, and proclaimed gospel. So this is, I painted kind of slightly lower uh, so that this is kind of fallen nature. And here, this kind of, of flowers. So this is, again, the Sierra Malabar Church, uh, uh, the resurrection. We have the St. Thomas Cross and all that kind of uh, you know, new flourishing or new life. So I, when I painted this, this was the uh, thought I had. So, this, like, uh, so all these paintings have more, it helped me to experience more, uh, like more into the theology and <clears throat> uh, about God. Like every painting gives me more deeper understanding about God. Uh, so this is another author piece I did for St. Siro Malabar Catholic Church in Charlottesville. Uh, so this was uh, the original uh, structure. Then he decided to paint directly to uh, the, the scenery, directly onto the wall. Then I painted this Mother Mary uh, uh, at my home. Then I put it there. Then I so did some touch-ups and I painted this separately on canvas. So then I have some assistants. <laughs> These are my, <laughs> my kids at that time. Uh, so they also helped me. Uh, then this is the final uh, uh, <clears throat> altar piece painting uh, for the uh, St. Mary's uh, Church. And this is the latest painting I, that I did, uh, St. Jester. Um, uh, no, many, uh, after the, this painting, many people came to me and said that they didn't know about this saint and they, <clears throat> uh, so this tried to help to understand about the saint, Saint Jesta and Rufina. They were in third century saints and they were making vessels and they refused to sell the vessels and they got like a martyrdom uh, because of that. And uh, so uh, this is the best way, like uh, using art, you can, uh, uh, like introduce saints to people, uh, their heroic life, people started to learn about them. And this is another aspect of uh, beauty. So with this, like I just uh, try to introduce Visio Divina, how to pray with images. This is, we know Lexio Divina, that is like how to pray with uh, <clears throat> the scripture alone. Uh, and that is a four step method. Like here we add Visio. This is, um, this is more like an Eastern tradition. So Lexio, uh, there is a five-step method, the Lexio, Visio, Meditatio, Oratio, and Contemplatio. Let me, I, I'll introduce, like uh, give an overview about each step. So in Lexio, uh, you read the scripture, kind of like one or two times. So I, for an example, I just used uh, the Jesus comes the um, uh, stone. Uh, so you can read this passage one or two times. Then you can have a painting uh, of, this this is uh, Rembrandt's painting. And you can see that you can look at this painting and try to experience more about the passage through this painting. You can see that uh, the, the, the entire painting is divided into two and here lighter part, the darker part, and here Jesus, here is, I know you can try to go through this scene. You can place yourself in the scene, especially in this painting, Rembrandt painted 13 people in this boat. Um, so um, we know there, there were 12 disciples. So many interpretations are there. So one interpretation is that uh, Rembrandt tried to put himself on this uh, painting or another interpretation is that he wanted to uh, include the observer in this painting. That means you can place yourself in, this, in the scene and you can uh, meditate on that. How would you feel when you, how do you be in the, in the, in the board? So, that's the VCO part. You can look at the uh, gaze on this image for some time. Then that will lead to a meditative phase. So after reading the scripture and gazing the, uh, the painting, consider personal message and challenge the software to you by God's revelation. You can ask many questions. Put yourself in the boat with the disciples. Where would you be in the boat? What sounds do you hear? You can experience, you can feel this. This image actually helps you uh, to as a whole being to experience that that uh, that passage, uh, you can ask questions and try to meditate on that. That is a meditative phase. In oratio phase, like you respond, you can 
when you feel that you know you you experience all this terror in your life sometimes you are going to to hardship then you can offer your that hardship to god as a prayer that is an oratio oratio means you are saying something to god um, that is your response and you ask for god's intervention uh, thanksgiving it could be thanksgiving or praise or repentance anything then this oratio slowly leads to contemplate you so uh, so soon you feel that uh, your words are inadequate you cannot express fully then you come to a silence a deeper silence where god starts to speak to you so this is kind of a deeper like uh, god is like coming to your heart and he embraces you he, he touches you and consoles you gives you affirmation this is kind of the time of a deeper contemplation so this is a five step method uh using image praying with images you can use icons there are many good books i i'll i'll introduce some of the books that you can use for this and or you can just search um, uh, images from the internet and you can use this kind of uh, like then as a whole being with your vision reading and, and everything as a entire in in your entirety you are involving in this scripture so that is that's a beautiful experience so that's this is called visio divina so let me conclude like with uh, some of the final thoughts uh, so artistic occasion um, so we so that beauty is the, the letter to artists just then uh, pope john paul ii said uh, beauty is the occasion bestowed on him or uh, artist by the creator in the gift of artistic talent so those who perceive in themselves this kind of divine spark which is artistic vocation it could be poet a writer a sculptor architect musician actor or so on any kind of artistic talent feel at the same time has the obligation not to waste this talent but to develop it in order to put at the service of the neighbor and humanity as a whole so i think this kriyat vibhana series all these are like directed to ways to develop our uh, nurture our god given talents uh, artists who are uh, conscious of their all of all this you know to that they must labor without allowing them to be driven by search for empty glory so that is a great temptation that we have when we produce art like we we have we like that search for glory craving for cheap popularity and profit for themselves so so we need to that is the challenge even for me as well like this is the challenge that we face like to overcome from this kind of a worldly or worldly attractions and desires of our body uh, and labor for the good for the common good of the humanity um, so this is kind of a, a part of our vocation so as we so the beauty is the vocation bestowed on the artist by creator in the gift of artistic talent so what are some suggestions based on um, some other artist and like some books and like my personal experience so it's important to create a zone of silence within uh, so the creative so we should be ready to receive this creative spark at any time uh, so you have always be open to god and receive his inspirations as an artist and always have a, re, a habit of recollection so what god is telling like in a particular scene like as a painter as an artist so i so i try to uh, see things in different ways so that i can or what is what god is telling like writing a poem or writing a song or so uh, based on uh, some situation so so interpret that in a god's like through god's eyes and understand that's a habit of recollection having a deeper and receptive vision so for an artist uh, uh, or a person who actually looking at like uh, with a artistic vocation uh, deeper and receptive vision so we always have like a not to look at like other people uh, see that like a look and like a momentous uh, gaze instead of that we need to have a deeper um, uh, receptive vision a will to renunciation and detachment as i uh, as we saw before a kind of a constant will of detachment so soul unburdened by desire of pain and go to see by streams not directly so there is another temptation to get to the best masterpiece uh, all of a sudden like a uh, one day 
it is not possible. It, it needs kind of a over uh, many years of like a persistent uh, work and effort that resulted in a, uh, this kind of <laughs> art. And it is a narrow path, free from sayings and doings so of the world. Uh, the world may not understand your, uh, your journey. So it is a narrow path. Uh, people may misunderstood you. Um, so uh, that is the challenge that you may take. And it is not a, not, uh, not in a complete solitude. Uh, it is not like a going kind of a secluded uh, life or like a hermit. Uh, um, instead of important to have like a, a state of solitude, that is a, a store of solitude like Jesus. He was among the people at that time. He went back for prayers and be in, the, like, um, be in the world, but not of the world. So every time, even if you are now out, but you have that kind of a state of solitude within you. That is only given by this deeper contemplation on the face of Christ or like a deeper encounter with Christ. So we have, uh, this is very challenging. Uh, so it is not an easy thing. Um, so uh, everyone, including me, like every day there are failures coming back and like, you know, starting this thing. So this is a, a part of our vocation. As a summary, um, what we have seen, um, the creation awaits the revelation of children of, of God, also through art and in art. Uh, so the entire universe, you know, the, the people are waiting for a beautiful thing or like art. This is your task. Uh, humanity in every age and even today looks to work of art to shed light upon its path and its destiny. So John, St. John Paul II. So there is a call for us, those who carry this divine spark. And it is everyone, everyone in one way or another way, um, uh, are kind of a creative, like uh, they, are, they are doing something or like creating something in, in their home or like, every, it's a call for everyone. But those who feel that this is a, specifically for this artistic call, we need to respond to this call. Uh, so it is not, a, it's not given, this artistic thing is not given to every, everyone. Uh, so if you have, if you feel that you have this call, you need to respond and you need to re re help to rediscover beauty. So the beauty is lost or like we saw in the earlier slides, how the contemporary art is going on. So we have a mission to um, enter into this contemporary world and rediscover beauty. And another important thing is to evangelize through beauty. Uh, as Bishop uh, Barron said, uh, this approach, this is non-confrontational, it's a very inviting like everyone through this beauty. So this is uh, evangelizing through beauty. And finally, um, as a movement uh, can be, uh, uh, it's an invitation to be missionaries of beauty. Is it possible like, you know, to spend uh, like, a, to make a uh, decision in front of God uh, to be a missionary for uh, of beauty? Um, this is my, uh, so, okay, these are some suggested reading. Of course, you can read a letter to artist. And there is another beautiful book, Intellectual Life by uh, Sati Langes, um, that gives you, that speaks about the journey of truth. But the truth, that's very applicable to the journey in the, like in the, in the beauty. Uh, then another book is like, a, that's a Visio Divina. If you wanted to explore more on Visio Divina, you can uh, read that, Transformed by God's Word. And discovering the power of um, Lexio and Visio Divina. And there is another book, uh, Contemplative Vision, that is uh, Christian Art and Prayer. That's also a good book. Way of Beauty by David Clayton. Um, that's, uh, I'm taking classes in that at his uh, school. Then Only the Lover Sings, Art and Contemplation by Joseph uh, Piper. That's a very beautiful book. Uh, it gives you an, 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 so the importance of seeing uh, in a different way. Then the return of the prodigal son by Henry Du Nguyen. And if you, uh, this is the, the last one is Eros and Agape, Christ, Redemption of Love and Beauty by Father Renio, uh, Renero and Dalamessa. So that is, uh, you can go to his website. That's, it's, it's there, it's an article. I think he it's a speech, uh, it's, it's there. With this, uh, this concludes <laughs> my presentation. Yeah. Wow, just wow, how incredible. Thank you so much for all that you shared. 
was incredible. There were so many moments where I was just like, wow, the whole time. Um, so we're going to open it up now for a time of questions and answers. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send them on the Zoom group chat uh, to me or Milana, and we'll kind of help facilitate that conversation. Or if there's something that really stood out to you and you'd like to share and um, kind of speak that with the group, again, please um, directly chat us as well. I can start. Um, so with having a family, uh, a wife and five kids, how do you, what are some practical steps or things you do to create that state of solitude or to create that space for silence in your life? Uh, it's challenging. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, one thing I noticed that uh, uh, kind of, uh, a kind of a deeper um, uh, kind of experience of Jesus, you know, uh, that actually helps. When we have, like, I, what I realized from my experience is that once we have a deeper communion with God, you know, all other things will fall into place and there is a harmony. So family is also helping, like a Diba and all kids, they are also helping. So, um, so as an important thing that I need to take care is that, like, my spiritual life. Once it is this in a good shape, like a six pillars, like you know, there uh, 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 by like the sacraments and all. Once I keep it in uh, in, a, in a good, um, a consistent way, then I think the rest of the things uh, it's very very easy. Otherwise, if I try to control myself, I, it, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> uh, Uh, and especially about the art and beauty is an, an important or vital part of our faith. Uh, um, we, it's a very abstract subject anyway, but you have presented it in your own way. Uh, it's a very vast subject. You cannot comprehend it within a few hours or a few minutes. He has to travel a lot. Yeah, this a vast ocean-like subject is about the art. So uh, um, th thank you for giving us some glimpses about the uh, vast uh, uh, knowledge about the art. art. My, 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 one of my question is, when a work become beautiful, is there any end point for an artwork? Oh, this is beautiful. How we say that? Can we make a stop there? <laughs> oh, thank you, Vidavi. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a very difficult decision. <laughs> uh, but what I feel is like, you know, it is like kind of normally uh, 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 uh. so it's kind of uh, we got a sense, okay. Uh, so uh, let me share one uh, so always there is kind of an uh, um, um, yeah there is uh, like uh, let me I, I don't know if I can share this uh, this is from um, Pope John Paul II and he said like all artists experience unbridged gap which lies between the work of their hands however successful it may be and the dazzling perfection of the beauty glimpsed in the ardor of the creative moment. What they manage to express in their painting, their sculpting, uh, is no more than a glimmer of the splendor which flared for a moment before the eyes of, uh, of, the, of their spirit. So uh, I think uh, that is very <laughs> important. So we, what we perceive, uh, we cannot produce it now. <laughs> Um, um, many times I felt in, when I see some art, um, I think that it is very relative. It is all, I thought it is always relative because um, you showed one um, picture in the initial part 
and a stone is kept on the top of a, um, a bridge-like thing. Yeah. It's a mere stone. But when it came to that proper place or in a different place, it has become a piece of art. But even without standing that uh, stone in that place, it can be a piece of art. Anywhere it is, it can be a piece of art. Yeah. So uh, it is always a relative term to become art. You know, sometimes we feel something about uh, this um, glass, this may be an artistic thing, but somebody may not be able to see this as an artistic uh, uh, artwork. Mm -hmm. but, so it's a very, there is a relative, relative understanding, I think. Is it true? Um, but uh, uh, what Bishop Barron is saying that, uh, uh, the beauty is very objective, right? Is, mm -hmm. uh, so because he's saying that the definition according to Thomas Aquinas uh, for the definition of beauty, the three things should be there, uh, allness, harmony, and radiance. That is integratis, uh, gratis, like caritas, and consonatia. So that means if these things, three things are there, uh, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, it is beautiful. So, uh, so some of the contemporary art, it, it may like it may not have that harmony. It may not have uh, lack some of these elements, which makes it not a maybe a beautiful thing. So, then um, according to Bishop Barron and uh, like Saint Thomas Aquinas, so the beauty is very objective, like truth. Hmm. Um, but some, uh, you know, it is very hard to define. I agree with you. It's very hard. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. Very hard to define. Yes, yes. Very hard to define the art or the beauty. Yes, yes. Uh, at the same time, there is art in everywhere. Yes. In all things, all the things that we encounter or we confront uh, or experience or just to see or touch or smell in everything, there is an art, implied art there. Yes. Uh, so only thing is we appreciate everything with a view of art yes. but this is a creation of god or this particular thing is a creation of god yes. so if we can apply that uh, create god's hand mm -hmm. in everything mm -hmm. whatever we see whatever we look whatever we experience i think these are all artistic work yes exciting that is what my i think so yes. I, that is my Yes. Uh, thank you, Jindo. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so, much. so you have done so many works in our diocese. So we appreciate that. Thank you. you thank started you. with our um, Baltimore church. And recently I saw your work in uh, Atlanta also. Yes, yes. The new church that we have built. Yes. That's also good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vidali. Thank you for your yeah, yeah. inputs. Yeah. You. There is one more question I want to ask. Uh, the, the, art, uh, the artwork or the work um, uh, creation always uh, related to the culture also? Yeah, very connected to the culture. Yes. Culture. Yes. Because when I went to some of our, you know, our, the, our Roman Rite churches, mm -hmm. they usually use only very light colors in their pictures. Yeah. Whereas our Indian culture, mm -hmm. uh, always I have seen, they use very deep colors. Yeah. Even in your work, I have noticed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, even in Baltimore, in uh, Atlanta, wherever I have seen your work, um, I, I can immediately say this was drawn by an Indian or some Asian work because I think it is a part of culture, I think. Um, the reason why I asked is I tried to uh, make a painting on one of our, when I was a pastor in a Latin Rite parish here in New Jersey, mm -hmm. then I brought that picture drawn by a person from in Kerala. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful picture and every one of our community appreciated, the, oh, it's a beautiful picture, so we can put it there. Mm -hmm. uh, that same picture didn't like by the other English community there. Yes. So yes. Then, I, then I realized mm -hmm. uh, there is a difference in the culture in appreciation of same piece of art. Absolutely. Uh, that's a complete, exactly true, 
it away because uh, even in iconography the byzantine style is more vibrant mm -hmm. but the russian style is very dull so mm -hmm. um, so if i create something for the american parishes i use a <laughs> very yeah 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 different. they may not uh, appreciate as the indians appreciate yes yes, yes. yeah yeah that yes. is fine okay thank you yeah. maybe um jilu I, I thought of having a, a session like this. I know you are conducting this session about the art and uh, relate things, uh, subjects related to art. like that, but I'm not a very great poet or anything, but I appreciate music. Maybe one of the uh, area is my uh, a skill or in my area is the music area. That is why. I am also appreciate the drawings and the paintings and pictures. Um, you know, when I was in the school time, this uh, drawing class, that was the most difficult uh, time uh, class for me because I have no connection to the paintings, no connection to the drawings. I don't know anything about that. In a way, uh, I was hating. I <laughs> hated that classes because I have no sense about the drawing. So at the same time, I can do a little bit of music also. So, but I appreciate the uh, drawings and the paintings and art things. That's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again, Balave. Um, we received a few more questions. If I can still pick at your brain, Ginger Jada. Um, so one of the questions that we received, the tip, depicting an artistic vision of Christianity and solitude. Uh, actually, I'm not judging like whether it is good or like, but of course, yeah, uh, we can like uh, express. And uh, when I read about that white panels, like uh, that artist vision was to display different kind of light, that is a uh, light coming and that, that kind of, to provide that kind of experience to uh, the viewers. So of course, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, and then one more question that we have is, if you had any advice about when you're feeling like a creative block, when you're creating, like if you had any suggestions or ideas or what you do when you have a creative block, maybe <laughs> to share. Yeah, that is a universal phenomenon. So, uh, what I do is like I try to see some kind of uh, paintings. Uh, I go to museums. Uh, so the National Gallery of Art is in um, almost 20 minutes from my workplace. So uh, whenever I go there, like every museum visit gives me a lot of inspiration. And I'm taking classes like uh, I have uh, uh, kind of a mentor. Every week I have, uh, I'm, I'm doing class with him. So in that way, a kind of a constant push for me otherwise it's 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 it's, it's a it's, <laughs> it's, some, it's very common like you know but with the help of god and you know prayer and you know, yeah well, those are the only questions i have thank you if anyone else have any questions or i guess we could Just a, a comment, I think, um, Jintashota, thank you so much for sharing your journey, especially uh, your discernment as you step more into your artistic vocation. And I imagine, you know, we just see a little bit on the outside, but I'm sure there was so much that was a part of that and uh, so much courage that was needed to kind of, uh, you know, enter into that. So maybe if there's any any kind of suggestions you would have for people who are, who are feeling that or feeling, you know, something um, drawing them towards, um, you know, a more contemplative or, or more artistic expression of their life, if there's any um, thoughts that you have on that to encourage um, that. Um, yeah, so again, uh, it's a journey, um, actually, uh, if God is calling to that kind of a life uh, or lifestyle, now he will show you, uh, give you more people and like a give affirmation. And um, it's not like a one short thing, like a one day thing. It's kind of a journey. Um, so always open your eyes and senses towards uh, the inspirations of God and like responding to that. And God will show you more and more. Uh, then, um, uh, and if you can, maybe if you seriously thinking about it, you can read that 
soul of the apostolate that speaks mm-hmm. about more like a contemplative life kind of a it's a transition from martha to mary <laughs> but both they are both are same you know i i don't say that one is better than the other but jesus prophets in the, like the, the anxiety of heart maybe problem but both lives are like lifestyles are good uh, but having a trust in god and like that's in the We, we have one last question, if, if that's okay. Um, so someone is asking, you know, some of these paintings that you have shared um, really took a lot of time to finish. Uh, what kept you motivated over such a long time to bring it to such a beautiful finish? Uh, you know, once you start, <laughs> you need to finish, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's I, I recommend like you know to start something then you know an incomplete piece in your studio is always like you know <laughs> it's kind of uh, giving you that uh, so uh, it's very hard for me to start <laughs> once mm-hmm. I start and by God's grace you know uh, may, it may take like a couple of months maybe for oil painting uh, but right now I am more towards the watercolor it may complete like everyone in 30 minutes or like an hour. So. Awesome. Well, I'll hand it off to our dear Johnny and some thoughts you'd like to share. Yeah, so um, thank you so much everyone for uh, attending um, many of the of, of the talks uh, and this that we that we really have very close to, to our just to share about beauty and, and truth and goodness. And in a special way, I, I think it was a beautiful time for us to reflect during this, this hard times, especially during this year, uh, to have, you know, kind of uh, many reminders. We, we started this journey um, with, uh, with Shelton, um, reminding us about creativity and what is all about uh, creativity, uh, being aware about our uh, our surroundings as a co-creators, also the places, uh, people that is around us, taking time also for some silence, as Jinto also mentioned, um, uh, and and being surrendering constantly to God, you know, that is the the greatest creator. Uh, we had the second talk with Father Juan Osorno that was also uh, a beautiful reminder of. Um, who is a masterpiece, you know, who is God's masterpiece and how, how valuable are for, for God as, a, as his masterpiece. Uh, and I think as a, as a creator, it's also important to, to be reminded of that we are very special, you know, creation of God and has to be able to have the communion with God and to create a or co- create. Um, then after we had a brother Gilan from, um, it's a community with a beautiful talk about beauty and, and reminding us also to, to find beauty in different places, uh, wherever we are, you know, even in the hardest and difficult places where we, we even can, can see it, uh, how we, we can open wide, you know, our eyes and then, and then bring up also this, this beauty, maybe for many that they can see it. And, and if we open our eyes and if we discover it also, we can share it. And, and at the same time, being an artist or, or those that we are still this journey, uh, artistic journey to, to be as a servant, you know, for, for this artistic gift that we have received and, and, and kind of as a servant, prepare the house, prepare the, the creation and, and leave it to, to him also to, to allow the, the, the people around us to encounter him through this creation. So, um, and then last week we have also Leanne also uh, uh, sharing with us about her journey and, and how powerful has been saying yes to, to the Lord and how this yes continually has been um, very powerful in her life and how he has provided after he, her yes with a new thing and a, a new path. And then we close with, you know, with our family here, that is Jinto, uh, that I think his journey is very special for all of us. We, we admire him, you know, his heart, his, uh, uh, for art, but also to discover him very deeply in, in this vocation that he has. So 
we are very thankful with you, Jinto, and with all the speakers that, that uh, you know, um, share with us. And all of us, uh, um, we really, like, receive so much. And, and I hope, we hope, all the, the team hope that, that we all receive uh, what the Lord wants us to, to hear and receive during this time. So, so I just wanted to also bring up the invitation that the Jinto uh, was... Uh, was uh, doing for all of us, you know, like we think that this is just a, a first step and we are kind of a journey and, and he uh, put it beautiful, in a beautiful words as a missionaries of beauty and, and it started to, to be this, uh, um, these people aware of, of our surroundings and bring up beauty around us, wherever we are, our work, family, our ministries that are very rich. So, and, and so new ways to see and new ways to create. Um, so, so I, I really encourage you if, if any of you uh, uh, want to go back to some of the talks and they couldn't attend, go and, and, and watch it. But definitely, we all of us, I think we have received so much through it. So, um, inviting you then, all of us, if, if any of you to share anything that you have received during this. Um, we a webinar series and you want to share some inspiration or or something that you wanted to bring up and and we will be sending a, a, a feedback form for us to also to 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 hear from you guys feels inspired now to to share something some kind of inspiration or something that you have received and, and you wanted to uh share it with all just um i open up for anyone who wants to share now and uh, maybe we can also conclude in prayer afterwards so if anyone wants to share something small or they wanted to share just please feel free not all at the same time but You're, you're shy today. I can share something small. Um, so I, I've been, uh, I'm, I'm not an artist in the sense of painter or something like that, but I really love imagery and have uh, like, you know, I see the beauty of that. And so uh, there's just been ima an image of the Trinity that's been in my prayer. And so I, um, I wrote a small poem uh, from my time of prayer about that. So that was especially after Leanne's talk last week and um, just this desire in my heart to to keep writing more. And I, I don't write poetry, I, this is my third poem, but um, I just, you know, it just kind of came really through the time of prayer. So it was really beautiful to have that. Anyone else feeling? And we, we are open, of course, to listen you up and, and, and to hear your experiences. And uh, well, we wanted to keep, you know, like to close in, uh, in prayer and to keep, you know, a conversation going on and for the coming months, especially since October mission is coming up. So we invite you, all of you uh, who wants to join this Missionaries of Beauty, just to keep connected and, and we will uh, definitely send you out um, some more information for those that wanted to keep, you know, they're um, connected and, you know, keep the conversation going about beauty and, and all the ways that we can, you know, um, continuing our journey as co-creators so um, well let's let's finish up in prayer then yeah and father and the son the holy spirit amen thank you lord we praise you jesus we thank you lord we glorify your name we thank you thank you jesus thank you can you father we thank you for um all your uh, providential plans in our lives, the Lord, and all the gifts that you have placed in each one of us for uh, your tenderness and gentleness to talk, uh, to talk to, you, to us in a personal way, uh, the way as you have placed the many gifts, the inspirations, uh, ideas, dreams, even our fears, Lord, are part of all our journey. 
journey, Lord, uh, to do your will and to accomplish the mission that you have placed in our hearts, wherever we are, Lord. Uh, in a special way, we surrender all of us and all those that have been attending um, the Winner Series, all of us in, in the movement, uh, to be open to your and to be open to create and to open wide open our eyes to see your beauty oh lord and be able to communicate and to share in a special way in those places where it is the most needed thank you lord. we praise you jesus thank you lord. thank you we praise you jesus Lord, we offer up all the desires that are in our hearts, Lord, the desires to be a, a, a creator, a co-creator with God, maybe a desire to be a missionary of beauty, the desire to show um, you through, through beauty in this world. Lord, we um, offer up the fears and insecurities that we may experience, the doubts, um, whether we're even good enough, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have placed in our hearts, the ways that you have created us, Lord, and, and are inviting us to be a part of, of that creation in the world. Lord, we pray that as we, um, as we reflect on all that we have heard in these past few weeks, and as we have reflected today on the vocation of an artist, we pray that you may open up the pathways, open up the um, the blocks that lay before us, Lord, that we may say yes to the, the big and little um, invitations that you place before us to create, O oh Lord. For those that um, know this song, what a beautiful name it is, or what a beautiful uh, name you have for us. Thank you, Lord, for us. It's really will save the world as you saved already the world, Lord. We uh, sing up to you and we declare how beautiful you are along the cross. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. In the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. I invite you, uh, for those that uh, already know the song, and we at least try to um, put it in our hearts, declaring how beautiful it is. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. 
role that the Lord has placed in our hearts and we have received we give that glory to him the glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit thank you everyone uh, and uh, we keep praying for all of us to be able to respond to his call we'll see you guys thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.